do we, we haven't completed we have just done the introduction isn't it from system you present the matters yes sir, yes, sir. so um, i'm thinking we'll uh, uh, keep that chapter pending now and uh, we'll start with onco and as uh, onco um is major content that is meant for from our course so we'll try to do we'll try to start oncology today is that fine for everyone yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay sir okay so uh, basic principle of chemotherapy is the first chapter in oncology then you gonna see the general introduction to cancer chemotherapy cases then chemotherapy uh, of breast cancer especially uh, we'll see the breast cancer anti cancer drug and how it is managed then leukemia okay which is a um, type of blood cancer and then management of chemotherapy nausea and chemosis so these are the major portion that we are going to discuss in oncology um so i hope uh, in pharmacology you already have the overview of um, um chemo drugs anti cancer drug am i right yes sir yes sir yes sir 100% so um but anyway um just to brush you up uh, i will go through i will make you go through just in a brief way to all the all the anti cancer drug that you already read in that you already studied in pharmacology okay because here we, we you should be very thorough with the pharmacology then only you can understand the management or treatment how that drug is being used here uh, can you guys see my ppt yes sir yes. no 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 ma anybody yes sir no sir no okay then let me close okay, let me see the video yes sir can you now no still now okay no problem i will do it again so bavik is in now as a long back sir long back <coughs> okay so can you see my ppt now yeah yes sir. yes sir okay so do you remember this this is the one we are discussing in our class also long time back and you people were not very much thorough with the cell division cell cycle and i asked you people to go back and um brush it up um from your previous um, textbook in from your previous year so that it will be more easy to understand your cancer and um, this is not a thing to tell you people repeatedly because you have a uh, red cancer in um second years which which uh, subject um pathophysiology pathophysiology okay Patho. so that is very important if you know the pathophysiology from your second year it will be easy for you to put under stand the chemo drug okay so what is the mean, what is the uh, meaning what is the um, what does this word chemotherapy mean can you would like therapy is from chemotherapy very using common, the very tablets you have already read in pharmacology using the drugs hmm? yeah therapy means we are uh, whenever we talk about pharmacotherapy that means drug but what do you mean by chemotherapy betsy can you tell me the therapy which is used for the cancer treatment okay. i mean so betsy is telling betsy is telling it's a therapy it's a drug that is used for cancer patient am i right betsy yes sir okay uh, uh, how many of you doesn't agree with this hmm everybody agree with this no sir no sir okay Rav ravi is not agreeing what what's your opinion ravi sir uh, any chemicals which are used for any treatment is called as chemotherapy sir okay yeah that's um, uh, very close uh, yeah i agree with the ravi that pardon someone is speaking hello who was that okay uh, so uh, what betsy is telling 
uh, from her understanding, yeah, uh, many people, if you ask, if you do a survey, many people will tell you that chemotherapy are the drugs um, that is used in especially cancer, okay? There are many times you hear from the uh, cancer patient, they are going for chemo cycle. So, um, but that, that's a very vague understanding of chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is not only the set of drugs that is only used for a patient, uh, cancer patient, okay? These are the drugs um, that, um, that can be, the, actually chemo means chemical. So whatever antibiotics you are uh, reading in any chapter, whether it is penicillin or cephalosporin, right from there, all those are chemo, chemo chemotherapy drug, okay, chemotherapeutic drug. But here um, in cancer, we, specific, we specifically use this term, um, we specifically use this term in, in context of cancer because most of the drugs what we use here are very potent, very uh, toxic, okay? And, uh, in, in, and we talk, we talk in, uh, from traditional, um, from conventional, we talk in terms of chemical, okay? So that's why um, the term chemotherapy is mostly used here. Uh, is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, so chemotherapy doesn't mean only the drugs in cancer. Okay, so you that's that's what I, my goal is um, uh, to make you understand. Okay, you just don't uh, think that chemotherapy is something only used in cancer. Chemotherapy can be any any antibiotic. Okay, so um, I will not go through all these. Why? Because yeah, started. we have already started. We had already discussed all these things. Do you remember? Yes. Okay, so you can have two kind of view in your uh, system. There is one two type of green view and uh, um, what uh, what what two kind of view you have? You know, speaker view. Do you see? Yeah. Yeah. So if you do the speaker view, you can see only me and my PPT, right? If you do the if you do the grid view, you can see each other. So whenever whenever I'm teaching from the PPT, you can uh, make it speaker view. Okay. Okay. And um, whenever I'm, uh, no, whenever we'll be discussing something on ourselves, we can you can make it uh, read or gallery view. Where is that? Okay. Everyone got it? Everyone got it? No. So if you do the no. gallery view, actually you can see each one of us in one screen. Yeah. Okay. 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 17 people, whatever we are here. Yeah. Yeah. If you swipe right, left. Maybe you are. I'm telling you for the laptop. I don't know what device you are using. Okay, fine. Everybody is comfortable. Yes. Okay. So okay. we we already have discussed about this um, uh, normal um, cells. What is um, uh, cell growth? What is cell cycle? What happens in the cancer? And moreover, you have read in your. Uh, path also okay so we, we and uh, I have given you the overview in one class I remember so I'm not going um, to repeat the same thing but uh, let me quickly recap it okay so I uh, we, we told we saw the difference between dysplasia and neoplasia what is neoplasm and we called it there can be two it can be of two types it can be of benign which is very um, non-dangerous or simple but it can also be a malignant which is um, like um, it, it can spread from one place to another place. And then we talked about um, the cause, the etiology, why the cancer happens. Um, and uh, with there we talked about two kinds of um, mechanism. One is uh, proto-oncogenes and one is um, the inhibitory oncogenes. So we have a gene that make person to, to get more cancer and we have a gene that suppress the gene to get uh, to uh, make the patient to protect the patient from the cancer that is called tumor suppressor gene so and any disbalance between this um, um, tumor suppressor gene and proto oncogene uh, can cause uh, can make the patient more vulnerable to cancer you remember we are discussing that yes yes sir yes yeah, so and we also told that there are many factors that make the patient more vulnerable to the uh, cancer genetic environment um, where we told that genetic loads the gun and the environment pulls the trigger. So actually, and that means the, um, that, uh, there are many factors like genetics and environment. Together when it comes, then only the, uh, the, the cancer can occur. Okay, if 
uh, many patients are uh, genetically more vulnerable to get cancer but they may not get unless uh, the environment doesn't trigger okay or many or uh, many environments may be a very hostile to um, to make the patient get cancer but um, if the patient is genetically uh, very uh, perfect if the patient is not um, i mean if the person if the patient is not genetically vulnerable he may not get uh, he or she may not get cancer so it's a um, it's a um, both the thing in environment factor we discussed like cigarette smoking or uv light exposure uh, which can cause lung cancer and skin cancer respectively and we talked about uh, this cell cycle okay do you remember we have uh, s phase g2 phase m phase g1 phase and what happens in all these phases yes, are reading this from your um 10th class i think okay and here we told that there are checkpoints so before entering to next phase uh, so from g2 to g and uh, g2 to m m phase we have um, checkpoints over there similarly when the cell enters from g1 phase to s phase there is a checkpoint so at each checkpoint it, uh, it is being checked what is being checked is like the is dna intact is has dna replicated is there any environmental factor that predisposes so if um this check uh, if these are not checked at each, at each uh, respective checkpoints then the, uh, the there can be um, uh, dysregulation of cell growth or cell uh, division and that is what is we call as cancer um, so and this is important checkpoints because we have um, in, in terms of therapeutics also this checkpoints is important because we have some drugs which are checkpoints um, inhibitors okay checkpoints inhibitors and um, um, we have we have the particular okay. clinical consequence because of that checkpoint inhibitors then we are discussing about cyclin dependent kinase um, um, cyclin dependent kinase which have um, again um, role in regulation of cell division okay this can regulate the cell division as you can see here in m phase we have m can you see my pointer yes sir can you see my pointer Yes, sir. Okay, so we have, for example, in M phase, we have trigger uh, this uh, MCDK. Yes, sir. Uh, similarly, we have in G phase, we have SCDK. Um, so CDK is nothing but cyclin dependent kinase. This helps in uh, regulation of cell divisions. Okay, so but uh, that means if there is any defects in cyclin dependent kinase, there can the cell regulation can be deregulated. De okay. So um, this is what is the overview of uh, entire cell division. Okay. So let me make my screen bigger. Is it better now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Better than before? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. So um, G0 phase, we got now same thing. What we saw in this uh, picture, same thing yes, is explained in the coming slide. What is G0 phase? You know, this is question before. Phase. Uh, where the cell doesn't divide, you can see G0 over here. Can you see my pointer? So here, here the cell is in resting phase. Okay, cell is not dividing. So when it goes to um, other phase like M phase or B2, then start uh, multiplying and dividing. Um, then cyclin D is in low content in this um, stage. Then there is something called RB uh, proteins. Uh, RB RB proteins. Okay, that gets hypophospho related okay rb is nothing but retinoblastoma okay this retinoblastoma proteins so um, this binds to e2f uh, factors and this is again transcription factor if you remember transcription from your biochemistry last year um, there are many factors that can stimulate the transcription um, do you remember do you remember from your uh, second year biochemistry Trans transcription translation you had read no there only uh, the uh, transcription factors are there one of them is d2 m okay so that again helps in trans um, because uh, for the cell division this transcription is required you know once the cell gets once the dna gets transcribed it can then translate and then make proteins and then the um, many components of cell and then the final cell can divide. Okay, so in that, uh, what I want to tell you is even this E2F transcription factors, um, the overall transcription can uh, regulate the um, regulate the cell division also. 
this is what uh, we have discussed do you remember this this also we have discussed do you remember okay let me recap again if you know so this is a resting cell this is the pro proliferating cell and in resting cell you can see the morphology of rb protein how it looks and in proliferating cell you can see how the rb protein inactivated and activated form looks okay so here uh, this is the resting cell and this, this is the active rb protein and this uh, is inactivated gene regulatory protein and this is the target okay this, and on this dna um, this RV protein acts actually. And you can see there is no activator here. So that is why this cell is in resting, okay? But whereas you see in this proliferating cell, you have a mitogen over here, okay? So which, uh, which activates this receptor. And then after, once this receptor gets activated, there goes the intracellular signaling pathway to these CDKs, okay? Uh, do you remember we had discussed the CDK in Z1 phase, CDK in G1 or RAS phase, okay? These are cycling dependent kinase in respective uh, phase of the cycle. Um, so uh, once this mitogen activates this receptor, the, the intracellular signaling pathway goes into the CDKs and you, uh, you might be also remembering that I had told you what is the role of CDKs? Ravi, what is the role of CDKs? Ravi there. He's out or what? Ravi? Okay, I think he's out. So, um, so here I told I have told you the uh, role of CDK is uh, regulating the in general the role of CDK is regulating the cell division so uh, ultimately we are talking here cell division in cancer so this intracellular signaling pathway can activate um, this uh, cdks in respective g phase or g1 phase or as phase okay this is how active rb protein was and once it gets phosphorylated once it gets phosphorylated okay then it gets um, then uh, this gets inactivated Okay, you can see this was the activated RB protein and this is the inactivated RB protein. So here, um, uh, and it regulates the transcription, you can see. So the DNA cannot be transcribed or um, or if it is, um, mitogen is very much uh, activated, then the transcription will become more, then the transcription will become more, and even the cell process so proliferation is Isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay, so and we discussed about the uh, review of apoptosis. Apoptosis is what, Bhavit? Uh, program cell. Program cell death. Program, okay, program cell death. And here we discussed uh, about that two thing. That two thing was um, tumor suppression and and proton coding. Okay, these are the two genes um, that can affect the um, growth of cells, okay? Tumor suppressor gene will suppress the tumor, whereas proton mm -hmm. gene will make, will make the patient more likely to get a, um, uh, cancer. Tumors, so cancer. From your, uh, from your ecology, can you remember any of the proton gene or tumor suppressor gene? I remember in the Susan Mams PPT, in the Ecology PPT, there is the name of gene. Very specifically, that gene you have read in um, anti cancer drug. Do you remember? Anyone? RBG? P53. Do you remember that? Let's go back and see that, okay? So here uh, there are some um, gene important to oncogenesis. Okay, so um, these codes for the proteins that regulate cell division or proliferation when turned on or off. Okay, so that's what I was uh, telling. If there is any malfunction or any mutation, mutation in that that can make the patient to get more. Um, um, vulnerable to get cancer that is nothing but oncogenesis okay and these changes this mutation or this malfunction can happen with virus with some chemicals and these viruses and chemicals may cause um, uh, malfunction by doing point mutation or by doing gene amplification or by chromosomal transcription okay 
So um, there is two important roots. Uh, one uh, I told proto oncogenesis, and uh, another one is tumor suppression gene. The proto oncogenesis codes for the proteins that turns the cell division on, because um, these are uh, oncogenes. Oncogenes that that makes the division faster, and this is what overexpression we are seeing here, and causes cancer, right? So similarly, tumor suppressor gene, this codes for the protein that turning that turns the cells off. Okay. So tumor suppressor gene suppress the yeah, suppress the tumor um, causing gene. But once this is off, uh, this can repress and it cannot uh, it, it cannot repress. I mean it can it cannot decrease the tumor, it cannot suppress the tumor further and further, and ultimately it can also cause cancer through this uh, cancer. In tumor suppressor gene. If any, anyone ha is having any question, you can raise your hands in between. Okay, I can see if you are raising your hands. So this is what we okay. saw in the previous slides. Uh, here, um, chemical virus radiation um, can cause the mutation. You know, the mutation caused by this environmental factor is called acquired mutation, whereas mutation that is in, in inherited from the birth itself, that is inherited mutation. But, and, uh, but either of these mutation can cause altered gene expression, okay? And um, because of this, there can be defect in proto-oncogenesis or uh, proto-oncogene or tumor suppressor gene. This is what we discussed. Uh, I was telling you, no, P53, RB1, okay? These are the tumor suppressor gene. If you see some of the gene, uh, oncogenes, CIS, ERBB, uh, RAS, MYC, gene for cycling D, these are the proto oncogenes okay so so defect in any of these two can cause development of primary tumors and that can uh, that can cause production of metalloproteinase um, like enzymes uh, like capsaic all those enzymes and those enzymes will invade the nearby tissue okay? and then angiogenesis happen can anyone tell mahesh can you tell what is angiogenesis no sir Hello. Can you hear us, Maya? No, yes, sir. Uh, what is angiogenesis? No, no, sir. Okay, you don't know. Follow me. Do you know? The process. Uh, the process. Pass, so that's why I'm asking. Yeah, somebody is telling answer. Tell me, who is that? New blood cell formation. Uh, the process of new Who is that? Tell your name, please. Process of new blood cell formation. Okay, swastika. Is it swastika? Swastika, sir. Okay, so yes, you are right. Angiogenesis is the process of new blood for blood vessels formation. Okay, where angio means blood vessel. So whenever you uh, hear the term angio, you, you know angiotensin, angiotensin, okay? So these, and uh, these, wherever this word root or prefix angio comes, that means we are talking about blood vessels. And genesis means production. So angiogenesis is the production of blood vessels. And this is important in case of um, uh, cancer cells. Do you, do you know why? Follow me. So for uh, providing nourishment to the cells. Yes, yes correct. You are right, follow me. So, um, uh, if there is angiogenesis, if there is the production of new blood vessels, you know, the cancer cells are uh, proliferating rapidly. Um, that means new cells are being formed and those new cells do need nutrition and um, all, the, all the normal constituents that other cells, all the normal com uh, um, constituents that other cells need. So, because of that, they, um, they, this angiogenesis process is hastened. Okay, so if the angiogenesis is happening uh, very properly, that means the, the cancer cell is going to get good amount of nutrition. Am I right? Yes. Yes. So the cancer cell is going to get the good amount of nutrition because there is a production of new blood vessels. So um, that means this can be one of our strategy to um, Target the cancer cell to uh, to decrease the growth of cancer cell. Is that my yes? If we decrease the angiogenesis, if we have a drug that can decrease the angiogenesis, so that can target the angiogenesis, that means the cancer cell is not uh, is not going to get the nutrition proper nutrition because there is no no good amount of blood vessels uh, that can supply the uh, nutrition through blood. 
So yes, we have some class of drug that can attacks this angiogenesis process or inhibits this angiogenesis process okay so that is why these are these processes are important you to uh, for you to understand right now so that you can understand the mechanism of drug and how the cancer growth is controlled okay so that is why you are seeing here as the angiogenesis is increasing the metastasis is increasing okay and then finally the development of secondary tumor can happen and uh, this is what we are discussing uncontrolled proliferation can happen change in growth factor um, change in receptors change in cell cycle transducer okay change in apoptotic mechanism change in telomerase expression anybody know what is telomerase ravi it's an enzyme during trans dna trans replication telomerase cell division cell division cell division okay anyone anyone so can help in the replication of eukaryotic chromosomes Okay, these are yeah. You are close that these are the uh, chromosomal part. Okay, telomerase, as the name says, telo. Telo means at the end. Okay, end tail kind of thing. And uh, uh, telomerase. Telomerase are the enzymes. Okay, Razan have raised the hands. Any query, Razan? Razan? Hello, Razan? or you are just experimenting hmm? okay so if you have any query you can raise your hand i can see if you are raising hands and then i can address if you have any particular doubt okay so um, what i was telling telomerase telomerase um, telomerase do have role in cell division okay because you know um, we are talking right now here chromosomes so if there is change in telomerase expression the replication Okay, the replication of DNA can be affected. So um, these are the enzymes that um, that that is uh, um, uh, this function is like stopping or inhibiting the growth of the chromosomal tail. Okay, so that's the telomerase um, um, expression enzyme. And if there is change in telomerase expression, that can also um, cause alteration in cell division or or uh, uncontrolled proliferation. If there is change in local blood vessel, this is what we were talking in the previous slide about angiogenesis. Okay. Okay. So now I will quickly run you through the some of the anti-cancer drugs. Okay, that are um, anti-proliferative or anti-cancer drugs. So um, actually, I have written this from other PPT because during my exam time I had read this uh, from my some other PPT. That's why. So um, these are, I mean, you can, I think uh, your uh, pharmacology PPT is also quite good uh, for reading this, but uh, if you read from textbook, it will be always better. That's what I recommend. So um, these affect cell division. All of these anti cancer drugs affect cell division, you know. And what kind of uh, cells? What kind of cell division generally? Rapidly, rapidly, uh, rapidly dividing cells, okay. Um, uh, and uh, this is very important to you to know that these anti-cancer drugs have more action on rapidly dividing cells than um, other cells. Why? Can you tell? There are two reasons for it. One reason number one is uh, reason number one is you know all the cancers are rapidly dividing cells. Correct? Okay. So if the, if the if you have a drugs that acts on rapidly dividing cells, that means that's a, that's a very good anti-cancer drug. And the hmm. other important point, or other important um, concept that is re related to rapidly dividing cell that you should know is, can you can somebody tell? It don't act on resting cells. Okay, fine. Its but what is mechanism the mechanism is um, the clinical implication is that you will have side effect or um, those cells, those natural cells in the body which are rapidly uh, dividing. For example, your hair, for hair. example, um, your mucus, for example, um, your follicles, hair follicles, as I told, and GI cells. These are rapidly dividing cells. Okay. 
So mm. that means this an uh, anti-cancer drug can even act on those cells. Okay, and because of that, you are getting the common side effects, on, on, uh, which is very classical to anti-cancer drug, like um, uh, like nausea, like vomiting, um, hair fall, hair fall, alopecia, all those things. Because because of this concept, that's why I told you this is very important for you to know uh, rapidly dividing cells. Okay. So uh, number one, if um, your anti-cancer drugs acts very nicely on rapidly dividing cells, that means it's a good anti-cancer drug. Number two, uh, because of the same property, you have most of the general side effects of anti-cancer drug. Okay, so most effective um, anti-cancer is that which acts during as phase of the cell cycle as many cause DNA damage, okay? And um, DNA damage, once it happens, that initiates the apoptosis, okay? And this is what I was telling. These these are these side effects are all related to rapidly dividing cells. For example, your bone marrow, okay, In the, the the cells production, the blood cell productions. These are rapidly dividing cells. So this bone marrow toxicity can happen because of anti-cancer drug. The patient you, you might have seen many and many patients on anti-cancer drugs have um, uh, low hemoglobin, have anemia. Um, all those kinds of um, blood cells complication and even impaired wound healing because you know why can anyone explain so Stika, can you explain why there would be impaired wound healing with anti-cancer drug i have no idea the answer is there can, can paula me guess <laughs> Superna? Okay, Mahesh? I don't know. But in, but in wound healing, uh, the cells uh, growth is faster, sir. Yeah, see, when you uh, get the wound, correct, you are right, Mahesh. When you get the wound, any kind of wound, um, so what happens? Does it take months together to heal that? No, right? So it heals very quickly. It heals very quickly, maybe in one or two or three days, compared to any other um, any other normal growth of uh, cells in your body. So that means there is rapidly growing, uh, rapid division is happening in the wound cells, isn't it? So that means uh, if, you are, if the patient is an anti-cancer drug and is also having any particular wound, the wound is not going to heal. The logic is very simple because these are rapidly dividing cells and the anti-cancer drugs um, acts on rapidly dividing cells. Similarly, hair follicle damage, that is where the patient and anti-cancer drug gets uh, alopecia or the alopecia. Hair and then GI epithelial damage, this is what this is the reason most of the patient on anti-cancer drug experience what? Nausea and, nausea and vomiting or vomiting. stress. Okay, this, uh -huh. this is again a big, big uh, challenge with the most of the chemotherapy drug. And because of this, only you have seen in the syllabus what you had seen in the syllabus. Do you remember? Uh, do you remember what you had seen in the syllabus? Treatment of nausea. nausea. Management of chemotherapy induced nausea yes, and nausea is also for like vomiting. Oh. Did, did you remember? Yes, sir. Okay, so um, this is the reason actually. Um, the, and though there are many, many side effects of the anti cancer drug, but one of the common side effects is um, nausea and vomiting. And this is why there is nausea. a separate protocol uh, to manage the chemotherapy induced nausea and vomiting. In short, we also tell it as. Um, C I N B. Okay. What is C I N B? We have we have different other kinds of vomiting. If you remember, I think in your second year pharmacy, uh -huh. there were the types of vomiting and that was the of the vomiting. Am I right? Yes, sir. And so there, um, you, uh, you might have read one of the. Types of vomiting is chemotherapy, based nausea vomiting. Another type is post-operative nausea vomiting. There are many different types, okay? But the pathophysiology, how the vomiting happens, like those retching, vomiting, a sensation, nausea, retching, vomiting, all those are very common to all the kinds of vomiting. So uh, it can even affect the growth of children. Can you tell why? They are also fast, sir. Yeah, they are, they are, the, the cells in the children grow very fast, very fast rate. So 
there can be uh, the growth retardation if the, if the children has got a cancer and he has put he has been put under anti cancer drug then there is high chance the patient and the children uh, may suffer from growth retardation okay so and then can you see my uh, slide still is it's uh, out of slide so i think now yes sir okay even the cells like gametes okay these uh, gametes cells are also very rapidly growing cells so that means rapidly dividing cells that means the, the, the patient on chemotherapy uh, may have problem with conception okay uh, conceiving the fetus okay that, that is why uh, cancer drugs are teratogenic because fetus you know growing fetus um, those so zygote embryo all those things you know so the, all those uh, is very rapidly growing cells okay so if the patient uh, uh, is put on cancer um, anti cancer drug pregnant patient put on anti cancer drug that means the fetus is going to suffer okay and uh, the last point they may themselves be carcinogen carcinogenic that means anti cancer drug do you remember sometimes back i was discussing in the class all the anti anti arrhythmic drugs can cause arrhythmia arrhythmia all the anti cancer drugs can cause cancer okay so because it is interfering with the normal phenomena for example you are taking a, you are taking a anti arrhythmic drugs anti arrhythmic okay there means arrhythmic arrhythmic means arrhythmia means there is abnormal rhythm so there is abnormal rhythm to correct that abnormal rhythm you are taking a, a drug that is anti arrhythmic drug so if uh, if you have abnormal rhythm you will you will take a drug anti arrhythmic drug and it will get corrected okay the rhythm, uh, the rhythm will be brought into normal but what if you don't have abnormal rhythm and you take uh, and you end up taking that anti arrhythmic drug that means uh, the normal rhythm is going to get changed okay. so the the patient can have arrhythmia Uh, to make it more simpler for example there is a tachycardia and you are giving a uh, drug to decrease the heart rate uh, so if it is tachycardia the uh, heart rate from 120 will come to 70 okay but if, if it is already 72 it will go further down which is bradycardia you know that type of thing is clear to everyone similarly yes, similarly the anti cancer drug themselves can be a carcinogen because it is inhibiting the normal normal uh, sorry it is inhibiting the rapidly growing cells okay but if you are giving this drug in a normal growing cells normal dividing cell so this, this can retard or this can cause many problem that itself can cause cancer okay you know the imbalance between tumor suppression and again uh, uh, proto oncology all those things uh, there are many uh, checkpoints you saw there are many mechanism that regulates the entire cell division so they, this uh, anti cancer drug can mess up at any place once you understand the mechanism of this drug you can uh, understand you can guess okay what kind of problem it can um, how it can cause cancer okay so this is what i think to, to a part of this i have discussed already or what huh? difficulty in chemotherapy effectiveness okay these are like why the chemotherapy uh, becomes less effective okay this can be because of solid tumors because there is um, growth rate is decreased as neoplasm increases in size okay so you know growth rate if the growth rate is decreased uh, and then then the anti cancer drug cannot work properly because anti cancer drugs are designed to um, act on rapidly growing cells right so if the growth rate itself is decreased then the anti cancer drug will not be much effective this is what we are talking like on typical disease chemotherapy effectiveness and sometimes this outgrows ability to maintain blood supply and not all cell proliferate continuously some cells proliferate for some time and then go in hibernating phase and then after some time it grows again Okay, so these are some of the reason for difficulties in chemotherapy effectiveness. Uh, dividing cells, maybe only around five percent turnover is happening in tumor cell tumor volume, or resting cells can be stimulated. Um, uh, resting cell that is G zero can be stimulated to G one, which is not sensitive to chemotherapy, but active uh, when therapy ends, and then but activated when therapy ends. Cell and cells are unable to divide, but uh, adds to tumor volume. if there is suspended cancer cell like in leukemia 
the killing can happen up to 99.99 percent of the power 11 cancer cell but this is very very high isn't it and then this can't really uh, rely on the host immunological defense to clean and to be kill remaining cancer cells do, do you, this is an important concept that um, uh, you all should know uh, have I talked any, any time about the difference between bacteria static and bacteria cytos, um, uh, antibiotics in, the, in your class? Do you remember? Anyway, bacteria static and bacteria cytos? Yes, sir. You remember? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Babit is telling us. Can you tell Babit what, what was that difference? Quickly. Static means the thing. I don't. I know the only difference of that. Okay, static. Static means it will only act. It will retard the growth. Reduce the cell size. Uh, replication of the bacteria. Okay. Um, uh, he is telling bacteria static will retard the growth. Will stop the growth. Okay. I'm agreeing with you, Babit. But uh, but. Uh, then why do we take um, uh, the static antibiotic if it doesn't kill the bacteria? It just retard the growth. It replication just stops is the growth. not there. Pardon? Replication is not there. Okay, replication is not there, but the bacteria is still there in the body. You are telling it just stop the growth. It doesn't kill it. Yeah. The only bactericidal antibiotic kill it. Bacteria static just stop the growth. Okay, and that means it just stop the growth. It halts the growth. Uh, that means once, the, once you stop taking the antibiotic, it may again regrow. Right? Am I right? So then why do we take a static antibiotic? What is the logic in that? Now after a certain lifespan, it will die at all. Uh, how can it uh, die if you are telling it stops the growth? Mahesh? Rajan? Can you? Julie, sir? The effect of the bacteria will get reduced. Pardon? When there is no replication. Pardon? The effect of the bacteria get reduced when there is no replication of the bacteria. Okay, effect get reduced, but it's not killing. That means that is when you just stop in, that means it can even again grow if you stop the antibiotic. See, the answer is in the slide itself, okay? There is post immunological defense. So, so it's not only you, we are depending on the antibiotic to get the um, bacteria cleared out of the body. It's also the immunological system, the patient immun post immunological system, and that helps in cl clearing of that. Uh, for example, when you take bacteria static, the bacteria growth gets stopped, okay? But uh, bacteria stop growth uh, gets stopped. Meantime, our immune system, it's the ability of our immune system to clear those, um, to clear out those uh, those bacteria who is, which like not growing or whose growth is stopped. Okay, so what you can understand from this point is a static antibiotic uh, probably may work better in immunocompetent patient than immunocompromised uh, patient. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. Yes. That means if the patient is immunocompromised, most likely used antibiotic will be sidel than static because you know the um, the um, uh, it's the immune mechanism, it's the immune ability to clear those stat staticized bacteria out of the body. Uh, so he, that is what we are talking here. Um, the, we, this can't rely on the host immunological defense to kill remaining cancer cells. So it also it, it's not only applies to the Antibiotics, but it also uh, or uh, infection or microorganism, but it also applies to the cancer cells. Okay, somebody is using. Uh, is it Aishwarya uh, annotations? Huh? Because I haven't stopped you people uh, to share the things to use the annotation, all those things. So even you people can do it now. <clears throat> so that doesn't mean sir. You okay? So, uh, diagnosis treatment dif uh, is difficult if rapid if it is getting rapidly uh, if it is growing rapidly. For example, in case of, in case of Burkitt's lymphoma, um, the, the the it doubles every 24 hours, which is very very uh, rapidly growing. Every 24 hours it doubles. Similarly, approximately 30 doublings happens 
in tumor mass, uh, sorry, doubling, doublings happen, and that is like tumor mass of two centimeters. That is very, very big, isn't it? And if it is not in the deep organ, it yes. can be detected easily. Um, approximately 10 additional doubling can happen and can the size can increase even up to 20 centimeters. Really, really big. Okay. Very big. So these are the drugs. This is what you read in your uh, uh, pharmacology, isn't it? The class of drugs. Can anyone yes. list out the class of drugs? What you have read in the pharmacology, deep tea? Sir, anti metabolite. Anti metabolite, okay. Anyway. Anti metabolite. Okay. Um, nitrogen. Upchart. Very good. Alkyl alkylating derivative. Okay. Uh, drugs are act, sorry. Uh, drugs are altering the hormone milieu such as uh, gonadotropin releases hormone. Correct. Correct. Uh, antibiotics. Okay. Correct. Very good. So this means the uh, anti cancer is still fresh in your mind. Um, it will help me to uh, make you understand better when you talk about therapy. Okay. So same thing. Uh, do you want me to um, do a quick recap of all the drugs that you have read over there, or shall I skip this? Whatever you say. Skip sir. Hmm? For example, uh, like. Um, these um, same drugs, whatever you read, no, same. I'll just uh, very quickly I'll run through, okay? Rather than completely skipping, this will help you to just recall it. Is that okay, Betsy? Okay, so the, um, in cytotoxic drug, we call this class of drugs as cytotoxic uh, because it directly acts on the cells and very toxic to the cells. Alkylating agents, anti metabolites. Uh, cytotoxic antibiotics we have, then we have some plant derivatives uh, in hormone, as um, said rightly now, then we have um, like uh, the drug like gonadotropin, um, the drugs that act on gonadotropin hormone, then there are some miscellaneous drugs. So this is the overview of all the drugs. It's like give you overview of all the drugs, that you, whatever you, uh, whatever she listed now. Um, like uh, I think pentasostatin, you have, um, pentasostatin, you haven't read in pharmacology, am I right? All right, no. I didn't see. So it inhibits the adenosine D aminos, okay, specific enzyme. So before uh, uh, before telling you about drug, all these drugs acts on this central pathway okay that is either in dna or rna or it inhibits synthesis or it acts on the microtubules or some enzyme okay on this central pathway all these drugs act whatever enzymes so this central dogma is very very important to understand uh, so there is purine synthesis pyrimidine synthesis again i'm not going to discuss how the purine gets synthesized i hope you remember that what are purine Adenine and guanine. Adenine and guanine. Yes, correct. Adenine, guanine, and purine and pyrimidine are cytosine, 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 cytosine thymine, and uracil. Okay, so three, three we have pyrimidine. So all these makes ribonucleotide. Okay, and then deoxyribonucleotide. Um, then DNA, then RNA, then proteins, and that, uh, some of the proteins are, uh, get uh, formed into microtubules, and some of the protein acts as enzymes. Okay, this is the very easy and um, very important part to understand the drugs. So this pentasostatin inhibits the adenosine D aminase. Okay, so it acts here. Similarly, 6 mercaptopurin or 6 thioguanine inhibits the purine synthesis. That means again the synthesis is getting um, inhibited. You know, with that, again, Babit? No, 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 not me, sir. Then, uh, then there are, in, um, this can also inhibit the nucleotide interconversion. Okay, the nucleotide interconversion over here. Then, um, then methotrexate, coming to methotrexate, you know methotrexate uh, can act on, uh, can act by inhibiting purine synthesis and uh, it can also inhibit the DTMP synthesis. What is DTMP? DTMP. Deoxythymidine monophosphate. Okay. So um, we'll see that in the mechanism it comes nicely. So it inhibits the deoxyribonucleotide over here. Similarly, citarabine. Okay, citarabine inhibits the DNA polymerase enzyme. 
uh, and uh, it also enables the RNA function over here. So then uh, Krish and Daspace, okay, Krish and Daspace, this drug deaminates the aspirazine, and that's why aspirazine is uh, amino acid, so it acts at the protein level, and it limits the protein synthesis over here. So, um, similar the drug 5 fluorouracil inhibits the DTM synthesis like uh, in the set. Again, the drug leomycin, uh, it damages the DNA and prevents the repair of the DNA leomycin. The drug uh, mitomycin, cisplatin, this, um, this uh, prevents, uh, this causes the cross-linking of DNA. Because, uh, because of that, uh, the replication or transcription doesn't happen properly and you know, and the drugs like campotestin, doxorubicin, etoposide, uh, amsacrine, so all these drugs inhibit the topoisomerase 2 or inhibit the RNA synthesis. That means it acts at the transcription level. So, do you remember what is topoisomerase 2? Uh, any, any other class of drugs that inhibits the same enzyme? No question. One. one and two. Hmm? Ravi? No, sir, I don't know. Hey, what is ciprofloxacin? To poison is to it uh, important enzyme in maintaining the structure, like. Okay, that's fine. Yes, you are right. That topoisomer is two is important enzyme that helps in uh, like prevention of uh, intercoiling of the DNA. Okay, it helps in um, like you know the ropes or the for example your earphone when you keep uh, it gets intertangled, right? Entangled. So that uh, similarly this DNA are the thread like structure. Uh, so this. You know, there is high possibility that even this, and these are very long, you know, so there is high possibility that this gets entangled. So this topoisomerase enzyme helps in prevention of that entangling, actually. Okay. And um, um, one of the drugs that you might have, that you remember, if you remember uh, in uh, quinolone, ciprofloxacin, huh? chloroquinolone. So those drugs even act by similar mechanism. Okay, there is topoisomerase 2, topoisomerase 2. DNA gyrus, do you, do you remember DNA gyrus? It is. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is nothing but the other name of this. Okay, so Bye. that that uh, that inhibits this. Uh, that means that these drugs work at this level. Um, then dactinomycin it intercalates in DNA. That means it, it, inter it goes into the DNA and inhibits the topoisomerase two as like um, etoposide and inhibits the RNA synthesis finally. And then we have vincalcoloids that sense it inhibits the uh, inhibits inhibit the function of microtubules. So this, yeah, I'm teaching more of you like uh, pharmacology than therapeutics right now. And very quickly, we are going to uh, discuss about the therapy part. Okay. So I think uh, this much is enough for today. Um, you do share your uh, okay. Swastika has raised her hand. Yeah. In case of bone marrow cancer, there will be a rapid cell division. Then the patient will be still anemic. Mm, that's uh, we have a separate chapter on that okay leukemia okay uh, um, there we are going to talk very specifically about uh, bone marrow cancer and i will uh, i will have, try to you'll get a clarity once you um, uh, understand that in that chapter okay and how the proliferation of the cells happen whether they can be and the patient will be your doubt is actually if the, there is a bone uh, marrow cancer the pro proliferation will be high will uh, will the patient be still anemic may not be okay um, not required that the patient will um, there is uh, as per theory that we have read till now um, the patient may not be anemic because it's a bone marrow cancer if it is rapidly pro uh, rapidly um, growing and uh, let me tell you also that again this is not the 100% correct answer you can see the patient with bone marrow cancer and anemia very very frequently also can you explain why the, so reason could be, will... the reason could be these are abnormal cells okay and anemia you know um, for uh, uh, when you're talking about anemia we're talking about rb or red blood cells so what what mm. the cell production happens because of uh, rapidly progressing cancer cells and what cells we get by natural 
now growth or natural division is in the, in the cell property gonna be different okay? you cannot expect the cancer cell to be um, functional uh, as our normal rbc are you getting yes sir. so though it may be rapidly growing okay, though it may be rapidly growing but uh, that's what this whole concept you will read in leukemia when you talk about leukemia there you will get you know though the cells proliferate at very high rate but you will not get the functional cells okay you the, the, the cell will not be able to do the their function properly as the natural cells okay the cancer cell won't be able to do that function okay, anybody have any other doubts you can raise your hands Okay, so you do share. Um, Mahesh, Mahesh anybody? Is trying to ask question. anybody? Okay, meantime, let me speak. If you have, you just try to raise your Mahesh hand. Mahesh, one send question, sir. Mahesh. In the chat. Okay, let me go back to the chat. Okay, Sustika have raised her hand again. Do you want to? Uh, do you have another question, Sustika? No, sir. No, sir. My name is. I'm lowering you. Okay, there is one chat in that. Is there? Uh, is there a link between angiogenesis and varicose vein? Um, definitely not. I think varicose vein is something different disease. Um, um, and uh, angiogenesis, uh, we are talking in terms of cancer here. So varicose vein. Uh, it's not a cancer, okay? Because then it's a um, different set of disease. It's not a cancer. So there is not a definite link between angiogenesis and varicose. Clear, Mahesh? Yes, sir. Okay, so you do share your experience, how it was, if it is okay, then we can continue with the next, uh, in the coming weeks also, we'll continue with similar kind of class because we have to um, complete the syllabus, okay? Uh, we don't know when this is gonna subside and when we'll be back. So if, if you have any trouble, you can go through some of the YouTube videos that will help you to um, help you to understand a better how it functions, how it works. Um, but from your side, I think there is nothing much to uh, learn. Uh, only you should learn how to text if you have any doubt, how how you should raise your hand. Um, if you have any doubts, is it it? Anything else? Any doubts? You any any problem? Anybody have faced uh, in today's session? I faced is um, I should learn how to do the code okay, so that I can uh, understand the collective suggestion of you people. So um, shall I ask one by one, Mahesh? Any problem did you face? Any problem did you face? Divya. Good. Okay, who is this HP? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Naptula? No, sir. Okay, Drasmi? Not there, I think. Dipti? Sir, it was, it was good, sir. Okay, you, attend, you, you were able to listen to me very clearly in the entire session. Any, any uh, difficulty you faced? So I was able to hear, sir. Okay, Hari Lakshmi. Aishwarya. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, how was that? It was good. It was good, sir. I was able to see and hear. But I don't know whether you people are in uh, seeing movie or listening to me. Okay. <laughs> no, sir. We are listening. <laughs> Arjun. Arjun. Uh, see, yes, he's sir. not there. Okay, he's there. Okay, let's see. Yes, any sir. problem? Any any suggestion? With uh, any anything else you're expecting from this kind, so that we, uh, I will try to um, resolve in the next uh, next class. Yes, sir, good on me, sir. Mm, uh, poll, I should learn how to uh, launch the poll so that I can know your understanding. Uh, Swastika, Dulisa. Yes, sir. It was good. Yes, sir. It was Nepal or in here in Bangalore. Slowly will improve. This was the first time for me, also for you people, also. So, no issue. 
um, next time we will try. I will try to come up with a poll question. I will try to come up with some more function in this so that we can. Uh, have, uh, attendance is there, sir. Attendance will get no problem. The entire session I have Thank recorded. You, sir. Okay. The Thank entire you, sir. class I have recorded, so I know who have, who and all is there. <laughs> So the uh, internet connection is not stable, so that's why I couldn't hear properly. No problem. So from next time, now you learn that. Now you learn that. So from next time, you should have a good internet connection. Okay, you should have your earphone if you want. Or you should be I mean, able to know native, how sir. to new talk. Ah. Huh? Native, there is no network properly, so I have to go to terrace. <laughs> no, no. Today is class, so yeah, that's right. I have been terrace. I informed earlier. Get ready with your um, gadgets. Okay, so shall you disperse? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so take care. Um, wash your hand. Okay. <laughs> Stay at your home. Okay, don't go outside. And social distancing. Okay. Happy time. Bye. Bye.